We're on problem 154. 154. They ask us, is x negative? So the question is, is x less than 0? Statement number 1 tells us, let's see, they say x to the third times 1 minus x squared is less than 0. And let's simplify. Let's say x to the third minus x to the fifth is less than 0. Let's see. We could add x to the fifth to both sides. x to the third is less than x to the fifth. Let's divide both sides by x squared, and that won't change the inequality since x squared is definitely going to be positive. Any integer squared, even if it's negative, is a positive. So you divide both sides by x squared, you get x is less than x to the third. Now let's see, does this answer that question? Or let's see what x's would satisfy this condition. So this is definitely, if you think of, so x, we can already say that x cannot be equal to 0, right? We, anything where this would have been an equality doesn't work. x can't be equal to 0. It can't be equal to 1, because 1 is equal to 1 third. And it can't be equal to negative 1. So we, we know that immediately. We know that for regular positive numbers, for numbers greater than 1, for numbers greater than 1, Taking it to the third power is always going to be greater than the number itself. You know, if you took two to the third power, that's greater than two. Three to the third power is greater than three. You know, one and a half to the third power is greater than one and a half. So we know that this this statement right here implies that x is greater than one. And let's see, are there any is there any negative? Is there a situation where x can be negative? Well, let's see. If x first of all, if x is between zero and one, x if x is between zero and one. Let's see, if you have 1 half, 1 half is not less than 1 eighth, so it doesn't work between 0 and 1. But what if you went between x is, what if x were between negative 1 and 0? Let's try an example. If you have negative 1 half is, is less than negative 1 eighth. It's more negative, right? Negative 1 half is, negative 1 half is less than negative 1 eighth, right? And you could try that with any fraction, because when you take it to the third power, it becomes a smaller fraction, but it becomes a smaller negative fraction. So x will be less than it, because it's more negative. So this, is, so this is true. So right now, this statement applies. If this is true, then x is either greater than 1, or it's between negative 1 and 0. And let's see, does it work if x is less than negative 1? Negative 2. Is negative 2 less than negative 8? Nope. Right, so this is, these are the only ranges where it works. This statement implies this. But this still isn't enough information to tell us whether x is less than 0. x could be greater than 1, which is definitely greater than 0. Or x could be less than 0. So we don't know yet, just from statement 1. Statement 2. Statement 2 tells us x squared minus 1 is less than 0. So add 1 to both sides. That tells us that x squared is less than 1. So when is something squared going to be less than 1? Well, it's going to have to be between negative 1. It's going to have to be neg between negative 1 and 1, right? It's essentially going to have to be a positive or a negative fraction less than 1. That's the only way that when you square it, you get a number less than 1, right? If it was greater than 1, you're definitely going to get a number greater than 1. And it's going to be positive either way. And if you get, if it's 1, it's going to be 1. And then 0 is in our range. So statement 2 tells us this, but it includes both positive and negative numbers. So it doesn't answer our question whether x was less than 0. But if we use both statements combined, right? what is the intersection? What is the overlap of this and this? Well, if x has to, has to be between negative 1 and 1, and it has to be one of these, right? the only one that it overlaps with is this one. You cannot have x being greater than 1 and x being in this range. You can have x being in this range and x being in this range, since this is a subset of this. So this is actually the more restrictive. And so since we go to that, that actually tells us that x has to be negative. So both statements combined are sufficient to answer this question, but individually they're not. The last question, 155. Marsha's bucket can hold a maximum of how many liters of water? So we want to know the capacity of her bucket. The capacity of her bucket. Statement number one says, the bucket currently contains 9 liters of water. 
that's useless. We don't know how. I mean, you know, that could be the bucket. Nine liters could be that. Or maybe nine liters is the full capacity. That tells us nothing about what the capacity of the bucket is. Uh, you know, I, if I told you I had a bite of the sandwich, that tells you nothing uh, as far as how large of a sandwich I can eat. So statement one is doesn't seem that useful. Statement two: If three liters of water, three liters of water are added to the bucket when it is half full of water, so one half times the capacity, right? When it's half full of water, you add three liters. So if three liters of water are added to the bucket when it is half full of water, the amount of water in the the amount of water in the bucket will increase by one third. So that is equal to so to increase so that is equal to to increase something by one third, that is like multiplying it by one and one third, right? That's one and one third times the capacity. That's what they're saying. Right? Right. The amount of water in the bucket will increase by one so they're essentially saying if you start it off with oh no no, sorry. You're gonna have one and one third times what you started off with, which was half your capacity. Which was half your capacity. That makes sense. We say we're starting with half of our capacity and we're adding three liters. We're adding three liters, and they're saying that that will increase the amount we have by one and one third. Let me write that. Let's say we're we start with we start with, I don't know, X, and we're adding three liters. You're saying that will equal one and one third, or four thirds times x, right? This this shows that x is increasing by one third. You could view this as one plus one third times x. This is an increase of one third. And they tell us that our starting point is half of capacity. So that's where I get the one half c. That's our starting point plus three is equal to four thirds times the starting point, or where we're adding water to. One half times c, and we could easily solve for c here. So you get a two. This cancels out, and then you get one half c plus three is equal to two thirds c. And let's see, we could subtract c from both one half c from both sides, and you get three is equal to two thirds minus one half c. And then you could just do that fac fraction, and you get c is equal to three over well. What is this? One half. So if you do it over six, four minus three. So this is one sixth. So this turns into one sixth. So c is equal to eighteen. But anyway, you didn't have to do all that. You should just realize that as soon as you can write this algebraic equation down, it's a linear equation with one unknown, and that one unknown is what we're trying to solve for. You have enough information to solve the problem. So statement c, sorry, statement two alone is sufficient to solve this problem. And we're all done with data sufficiency. See y'all in the